inspired on Liberty Radio. Good evening and welcome to Be Inspired. May God bless you abundantly. And as you can see as we begin our program, if you're watching me on your smartphone or your tablet or your laptop, we have here right behind us the logo of the It Is Finished event. Now, you may think that as a church member or someone who attends the church, you may not have a responsibility to do anything in terms of soul winning. That the event of It Is Finished and any event of the church perhaps is of benefit for you and you, you're thinking about yourself and that's it. You have your own needs, your own problems. Why should you invest time in spreading the word? They're not only spreading the word because when, you, when we use the words spreading the word, it sounds a little bit like you're handing out leaflets and talking about something not that important. But you will understand tonight through the Word of God the importance that everyone who comes to know the truth, the duty that they have, and the importance of that duty of passing it on to everyone that we come into contact with. Now, if you have your Bible and you would like to open your Bible there where you are, I'd like you to open your Bible in the book of Ezekiel chapter 33. In just a moment, you're going to understand through the Word of God the weight, the weight that is on our shoulders, the weight of responsibility that is on our shoulders to speak about the power of God to everyone that is willing to listen. Ezekiel chapter 33 from verse 7 says the following, So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. Okay, in order for you to understand the setting of this word better, you need to understand that in the past, a city was not a place like we know today. Cities today, they are these sprawling spaces full of buildings. In the past, a city was contained within walls in order for the, the inhabitants of that city to be protected. And on the walls of the city, there were watchtowers. And there were soldiers who were posted in those watchtowers so that they could look out for any uh, impending dangers. If, sem if someone was about to attack the city, if there was a danger approaching, then they would blow the trumpet so that the people inside the city who were going about their lives as if nothing was happening, they were trading and selling and buying and getting married and doing these normal things, once they heard the trumpet, they knew that there was a danger coming their way. Now, what they did after they heard the trumpet, that was a different story. But the watchman had to fulfill his duty. So we're going to read that verse again, because now that you understand the setting of what a city was like before, you're going to understand this verse in a different way. Let's go. It says the following, So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear the word from my mouth and warn them from me or for me. Oh my God. When I say to the when I say to the wicked, O oh wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. God was saying, to the watchman. You have an, a duty 
to blow the trumpet and let everyone know that danger is coming. Now, if you know that danger is coming and you do not warn the people and they die because you didn't warn them, then I will require their blood from your hands, meaning you will be responsible for your death, for their death. But if you blow the trumpet to warn them of danger and they ignore your warnings, then you will not be responsible for their death. What God was trying to say, who is the watchman? God was talking to the prophet. The prophet's duty was to let everybody know the words of God. Now, if people would hear the words of God, what they did after that, it was no longer the, the prophet's responsibility. We have the example that we spoke about last week of Noah, who for years, as he was building the ark, he told people, he gave them a chance to be there with him, to enter the ark, but he was mocked. And so therefore he was no longer responsible for their death. Now you live with family members, you work with people and everybody who comes into contact with you in your daily life, we have a responsibility, you have a responsibility to let this person know about the power of God. If you don't, if you have an opportunity to bring salvation to someone who doesn't have salvation and you do not present them with that opportunity, the blood of that person will be required from your hands. In fact, we were saying tonight in the service when we spoke about the wrath of God that we were saying the following. Why, when you come to the universal church, why do you hear the... the the, the non-sugar-coated version of the truth. Why do you hear the direct truth, even if it means that sometimes people in the church may be offended, they may not come back because the message was too uh, revealing for them? Because we know, we understand, I have here my colleagues, Pastor Philip from Stanford Hill, Pastor Joseph here from Finsbury Park, we understand we have a duty. That if we are speaking to someone, a person is living in sin, and we do not tell them that if they don't change, they don't repent, they might end up in hell. If we don't do that and a person ends up in hell because we did not speak to them, we will be responsible. So every opportunity, we have to make use of that opportunity to tell people th the truth. But of course, we only have access to people inside the church building. We can go outside and we can evangelize. But we only have access in terms of sitting down with people, talking to them in the church building. But our church members, Pastor Joseph and Pastor Philip, they have access to people everywhere. When they sit down at home with their family, they have a, they have a captive audience in front of them. When they're at work having lunch with their colleagues, they have another captive audience with there before them that we don't have access to these people. We, we, we don't know who these people are. They will not stop for even a minute maybe to talk to us, but they will listen to them. But there are many people who think, I want the power of God for my life. I want to say it is finished for my problems. But they don't understand that they have a responsibility as a watchman to blow the trumpet. And if we don't blow the trumpet, the souls of those who are lost will be required from our hands. So everywhere we are, Pastor Philip, everywhere we go into the places where we live our daily lives, the people that we know, our neighbors, that you, you, you get home at night and you speak to your neighbor, how was your day? How, how, how did work go? How? These people, they are the captive audience that God prepared for us, for us to share our faith. And, and we have to use opportunities like this event where we have the materials, the newspapers, the, where we have the, 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 the opportunity 
to let people know that they don't have to suffer anymore. We have to blow the trumpet. Yes, Bishop. This is the truth. This is the truth without twisted. The ma many people think that just because they don't have any title in church, they don't have responsibilities, this this burden or this privilege, I would say, to to share the truth, to to invite people, to be the the the, the watchman, is not in their shoulder. They they don't they don't need to do it. But the truth is, if the if the truth arrive in their life, if they was delivered by the truth, is their duty to share it wherever they are. Wherever they are is not by chance. The one thing that I, I learned in my journey is when I cross the lives of someone, this is not by chance. This is not uh, uh, something that I, 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 I should ignore. I have, I, I am attentive to improve things in my life and to share share what improve this my life to to those who cross my life yeah and you know you, you were saying something interesting because a lot of people think like this the 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 job of evangelizing is for the pastor is for the assistant but for example the people who live in the building where you live how can we have access to those people if we could we would and we can go there and knock people's doors. But you know very well how the process of knocking doors goes here in the UK, right? We are, uh, we're called all kinds of names under the sun. But that won't happen to you. Same thing at work. If we go to a, a company to try to talk to people there in that company, we won't even make it past the door. <laughs> the security guard will kick us out. But you have that opportunity. Just like a city did not have only one watchman. It needed to have watchmen in every corner of the city walls so that there were no blind spots. God today has raised among us different watchmen that, that can be in different places. We have, for example, Pastor Joseph, we have people uh, in our church that work in high uh, probably the right, the right word is not high jobs, but they work in high profile positions. They work with politicians. They work with uh, CEOs of companies. We have no access to those people, but they have. They have, uh, they have people on their reach that is not in our environment and probably never going to meet them. So they are the watchmen to those people. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Sorry. I, I just remembered as you were speaking, we had an assistant uh, in America who cleaned the office of the United States of America, or of the president of the United States of America, or the office, or the house, something like that. And I remember she evangelized the president. She gave him uh, uh, a newspaper. Imagine that. How no chance of us ever having that opportunity, right? But they had. Because she has access to the man. So she's the watchman for, for that moment. And why we preach the, tru the truth in the church and we say it? Because we don't know if a person will be alive tomorrow. We don't know if in a few hours something going to happen. So sometimes we're going to have only one chance. Uh, sorry to interrupt you again. You were telling me, I, I went out today uh, just quickly, when I came back, the car of the church was covered in sand. And I, I, I thought, sand? Pastor Joseph was telling me that today we had a sandstorm in London. Now, you tell me, when was the last, uh, the last time you saw a sandstorm in London? I've heard of sandstorms in the desert, in, in the Sahara Desert, in Africa, in Dubai. In London, where do you see sand other than children's playground? There's no sand around. This afternoon, there was a 7.3 earthquake in Japan. They were expecting a tsunami to, to, to hit Japan at any moment. It's a possibility of, of that. It's like you were saying just now. You know, we are living moments that we don't know when it will be the last chance we will have of speaking about Jesus to someone. We cannot be selfish. We have the trumpet in our hands. We have to blow the trumpet. And many people think like this. No, I'll, I'll have an extra time. No one can decide time. 
we are alive today. I, I don't know what's going to happen with me tomorrow. So every single day we have to fight for salvation. But once we, we came to church, we received the word of truth. Now's the time to share. Today in the afternoon, Bishop, uh, someone came with a newspaper, with some names written in the newspaper. The person was evangelizing with the, the newspaper of its finish. Evangelize people in the, in, in the, in the tube when they are coming to, to Israel Park and say, I'm going to pray for those names. I'm going to pray for those names because I believe this person is going to come to church. So the, she was a watch woman mm -hmm. inside of the tube saving those around. So there is no place. There's a matter. There's a tube on the streets, in the parliament. But God want to use someone. And those who are in our environment and our reach, we must get them. We must reach those people. That's right. You know, they, they say that, um, I, I hope I'm going to say this correctly, but they say that there's six degrees of separation between you and anyone else in this world, which means you are only six people away from you to anyone else in this world, there or thereabouts, which means I do not know, I do not know for example, the queen. But there are, there's a, a link of six people from who I am to people that I know that, that can somehow link me to the queen. Now, I'm not saying that you will go out and evangelize the queen. If, if you can, please, by all means, because she also needs salvation. But this is to show that we can reach anyone. And it is our duty. We have... The trumpet on our hands, we have to be ready to blow that trumpet at any moment. And that trumpet is the newspaper that you have in your hands. That trumpet is your mouth, is the opportunity that you are presented to speak to someone about the Lord Jesus. And if you say, Bishop, well, what if I go there and the person refuses? But we read, if you blow the trumpet and the person does not hear, then you will not be responsible for their, their death or them not being saved. Their, their blood will not be required from your hands. But if we have that chance, we have to make use of that chance. This is why in the church we speak about the wrath of God. We speak about heaven and hell. And this is what this opportunity of the it is finished we can't let it pass by. We have now, we had until today, we had 30 days until Good Friday. From tomorrow, only 29. We have to, to squeeze as much of every day as possible for us to save souls. Your church, wherever you're watching me from, we have people here saying, Ipswich connected, Gravesend connected, Los Els connected. Uh, you know, Wherever you are from, your church has to be full on the day of the it is finished. We're going to listen to a song. We'll come back in just a moment to pray for you that wants to be a watchman, a watchwoman where you are. strength has gone away I fought with everything I had my miracle is yet to be seen I raised my cry up to you I've been told this is my end, but I look to you, I look to you, Lord. I've been told this is my end, but I look to you, I look to you, my Lord. Just a little bit longer that 
the tears will fall just a little bit longer and the night will be over and my Lord and my Lord very soon will return just a little bit longer that the tears will fall just a little bit longer and the night will be over and my Lord and my Lord will return I've been told that this is my end but I look to you I look to you, my Lord. I've been told this is my end, but I look to you. I look to you, my Lord. Just a little bit longer that the tears will fall. Just a little bit longer and the night will be over and my lord and my lord very soon will return just a little bit longer that the tears will fall just a little bit longer and the night will be Just a little bit longer that the tears will fall. Just a little bit longer and the night will be over. And my Lord, and my Lord, very soon will return. Just a That the tears will fall just a little bit longer and the night will be over and my Lord and my Lord will return My Lord, come and raise my Father. A multitude, a nation of watchmen and watchwomen. Men and women who understand that you've placed a trumpet on their hands. And we cannot be silent. We cannot refuse to use what you have given to us. You have given us, my Lord, the authority to speak about your power, about what you have done. And that the price you paid was paid once and doesn't need to be paid again. So that those who are suffering in sickness, depressed, suicidal, my Lord, you came to bring life to these people, to show them, my Lord, that if they are suffering, if they cling and they believe the sacrifice you made, they don't have to suffer again. For you are a God of power. You are the same yesterday, today and forever. Ah, my God, so in the name of Jesus Christ, Stretch out your hands, my Lord, so that in this moment, those who have a thirst to be used by you, that they can be inspired 
so they can know how to reach those who are lost. Like one day they, would, they were reached. Perhaps someone with passion for souls, with wisdom, asking you for wisdom, was used to reach this person. And now you are counting on us to do the same, my Lord. I pray, my Lord, that when this person goes out of their way to say to you, Lord, here I am, use me. When they say, use me, oh Lord, that in that moment you can bring someone to cross their path that will be open to receive the life, the life that they have to give through your words. Ah, my God, I know you said that if we blow the trumpet and people refuse to hear, we are no longer responsible. But Lord, we have no pleasure in people not wanting to hear. We want people to know, my Lord, to know that there is nothing better than to live under your guidance, your, your salvation, your peace. So when we blow our trumpet, break the hearts of stone, break the walls that prevent people from giving in and accepting that you are alive, my God. Break those walls in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we bless right now your church, the soul winners, and those who want to be used by you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Make yourself available to be used like a watchman and He will use you. Reminding you that on the 27th at 10 a.m. Bishop Macedo will be with us for the first time in almost 10 years. We will have the privilege of taking part of a service with Him and I'm sure that the Holy Spirit will use that moment to teach us, to strengthen us, to bring a new dimension, a new level to His church. I would like to ask you, you who will be coming, and I know many people will be coming, that you either don't bring your phone or when you walk in, make sure your phone is switched off and arrive early. Arrive early so that you can give your best for God. On the 26th, Saturday, the day before Bishop comes, We'll be doing the launching of Bishop Macedo's brand new book. We'll be there to sign attention. We will be there, not Bishop Macedo will be there, but we will be there to sign the brand new book of Bishop Macedo, Here I Am Lord. In fact, this book, we will be studying this book in our battalion meetings on Saturday mornings. All right? You can get your ticket for your book and on Saturday the 26th at 3 p.m. will be the launch of the book, you can, arrange, you can arrive maybe 30 minutes before to get ready and then it will be a blessed day. All right. May God bless you abundantly. Have a wonderful night. Tomorrow we'll be with you again at the same time. Bye-bye.